As I got another rhyme, another rhythm for y'all to listen I'm never quitting on my mission, I'ma roll with what I'm giving Got some ambition, this new addition, filling positions Looking at the void in myself and feeling what's missing Better watch the way you going, better go in the right direction In the moment you stressing, but you gon' be counting blessings And I know that for certain, keep on working, open curtains Haters swerving, cause they ain't ready for your final version Whoa. I'm never gonna give up, give up Fall down, I just gotta get up, get up you're listening to the Tom Ficklin Show on WNHH LP 103.5 FM, your home for community radio. Good morning, good morning. Happy first Friday to all. Very privileged this morning to have a distinguished guest that's going to help us to get into a conversation that I'm sure many people have been hearing on the news and on the media. And we want to have some. Um, information talking about this and and, and we're going to keep it real general um um of course our first friday of the uh, month show is called real talk and i always start off by thanking tom ficklin who allows me to host this once a month and so we thought about over this last month what topic would be a real topic to talk about today so first i'll um like to let my distinguished guest introduce himself and tell us a little bit about himself and then we're going to get into the discussion and hopefully it'll be a very robust discussion this morning for our listeners. Uh, cool. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Joel Baden. Uh, I teach Hebrew Bible Old Testament at uh, Yale Divinity School. Thank you, Mr. Baden, this morning, Professor. So we'll get right to the point of what's been going on in the news and things that we've been hearing and, and want to have the discussion from what your um, knowledge is of it. So we, we'll, need, we'll leave the uh, um, popular and, and, and those individuals nameless today, but I'm sure people do know the names that we're uh, discussing. But the thought is, is the 12 tribes of Judah, is there any dissension that has to do with African American? And so just in your studies and in your classes and looking into the Old Testament, is this something that is kind of factual? Or can you speak to this point on helping our listeners understand why is that being such a, a, a major topic in our communities today? And what is the validity of that? Sure. Um... So, you know, just to like set out a tiny bit of the history to start with, uh, what we're talking about is, uh, you know, the, in, in, in the Bible and, uh, and in history, we had uh, a couple of times uh, where uh, Israel, uh, the ancient nation, uh, was conquered uh, by foreigners, uh, by foreign empires, and its, its various peoples sort of dispersed uh, uh, sent into exile. Uh, so at the end of the 8th century BC, um, the Assyrians came and they uh, conquered huge parts of the of the country and exiled a bunch of their people at that point, right, took them out of their lands and scattered them, brought them back to uh, Mesopotamia. And then a few hundred years later, they did the same thing again. The Babylonians came and, uh, and destroyed uh, a lot of the... Um, uh, a lot of the nation of Judah and uh, scattered a bunch of their people. Uh, and as a result, you know, lots of folks who, uh, lots of, of people and groups who had been living in Israel, who were considered part of Israel for generations and generations, uh, ended up living in all kinds of places, uh, not just in Mesopotamia, uh, you know, modern day Iraq, uh, where they were taken, but uh, we have we have people who clearly identify as like uh, Israelite or Jewish living down in Egypt, um, and uh, and the notion of their you know the sort of like the lost tribes of Israel uh, goes back to this uh, you know where did all those peoples go and where you know how far could they have possibly been scattered. And there are many many or at least a number of groups in Africa who claim to be the descendants of just those, you know, ancient Israelites and Jews who uh, were sent, uh, were sent away or, you know, went into exile or escaped. Um, uh, and, you know, they're, and, and they're throughout Africa, Ethiopia, um, Zimbabwe, 
uh, Nigeria. There are groups that that claim uh, that sort of claim Jewish practices and like do Jewish practices in recognizably Jewish ways, and who claim uh, you know ancient descent uh, from uh, from from ancient Israel. It's not always easy to say, oh yeah, that one's definitely right. Like they definitely have a strong claim. That's that's true, but some of them do. I mean, there you know, there's the tri- uh, there's a tribe in uh, in Zimbabwe, or I think the Lemba, uh, who have like like DNA markers of Jewish descent. Uh, that's pretty good, right? Uh, you know, that's uh, that's about as good as it's going to get in terms of having a claim to the thing. Honestly, you know, it seems really clear that genetically or not, there are groups who have been practicing Jews for a long time in Africa. Right? Like, I'm, I'm not particularly hung up on uh, whether the DNA says that they are actually descended from whoever, but there's certainly nothing, you know, Judaism, uh, you know, if you make it genetic, and you make it make Judaism about DNA, you're, which people do, Jews do, and non-Jews do. But when you do that, like you're making it substantially different from, say, Christian. It's not like a Christian gene, mm-hmm. you know. Like uh, you're Christian because you do the because you believe the things and you do the things. So if there are Af- if there are people in Africa who have been doing and believing in Judaism for hundreds of years, and that seems to be the case like DNA testing can do like a little bit to tell us something, but mm-hmm. mostly they're telling us themselves that they're Jewish. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't need to go, I, what am I going to go tell them? No, you're not really. Cause you don't have the, you don't have the, like the lineage. You don't have the genetics. That's, mm-hmm. uh, that's not anyone's place. So that said, like, yes, I think there is like, there's a historical situation in which, the people that we know from the Bible as Israel end up, some of them in Africa. There's genetic reason to think that some of them ended up in Africa. But mm-hmm. mostly, there's people in Africa, right? Like, uh, there's Black people in Africa who have been practicing Jews for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's good, you know. So, yeah. Yes, okay. there are Jews <laughs> in Africa. Okay. So to me, I think we're looking at it as a practice of religion more than it is a genetic um, follow through or someone to claim to be Jewish from a descent of Africa. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, to to me, it does. Um, Yeah. Does that, is that, uh... that, that, that is helpful to the overall discussion, but I guess as we get technical and we look at the discussion, we, we're, we're kind of bewildered because um, I'll be honest with you. What happens a lot is people nowadays, what the worry is, is that if anything is ever said or discussed out, I would say probably outside of the Holocaust, which we all would agree was something that was terrible and, and, and atrocity that, you know, no people should have went through. But if we looked at it and we we were kind of grouped together when the exile came over to America of those slaves who were here from Africa. And the thought, as it seemed in the beginning, was there was some type of synergy of working together not to be op- oppressed. Mm-hmm. And, and what people tend to see is a dissension of a religious group but they kind of claim it as a bit more of a nationality that ascended and was able to gain wealth and power over the years as we come to present and then another group like the african americans who didn't ascend to power and wealth and so now we have the clashes that happen when those particular conversations come up and what is being said is that you feel as though um, there's a lot of criticism based on a particular religion or nationality, but then then individuals are are now trying to claim, say, hey, I'm part of that same nationality and religion. You can't look at me as um, oppressing a particular uh, group of people. And I think that's where we're at. And we're just trying to find from a historical point is kind of where did that 
break come in to where there was more attention put on the fact that um, if someone has ascended to wealth and power, that what what does that mean in, a, in the American culture and how how do we deal with it when we, when we deal with the different nationalities and the different. Yeah, it's 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 hard, right, because. You know, the. I talk, I, I've been talking about this a little bit in my in my teaching and in other places like. Uh, at this point. Uh, at this point in America, uh, Jews, you know, like like me at least, uh, in the Northeast here where we are, uh, we read as and benefit from being white people. But that wasn't the case, you know, a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. We weren't white in this in the same way that it's you know when Italian immigrants first moved mm-hmm. here, they mm-hmm. weren't white. Uh, mm-hmm. Polish immigrants they moved here weren't white, but right? mm-hmm. Jewish immigrants weren't white either. Uh, mm-hmm. Not in the not in the like not in the sense of having the, the like the power of of cultural whiteness. And there are parts of you know I'm talking about in the Northeast right now. There are certainly parts of America now where I'm still not white. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Where 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 Jews are still not um, not white in the way that uh, that that it I guess like it matters. Um, uh, and so, you know, like what I what I recognize is that like the benefits, the social and power dynamic kind of benefits of whiteness that I think, um, you know, in some cases have allowed for, uh, you know, a, a Jewish flourishing of certain types in contemporary society. It all still feels to me at least uh pretty tenuous and like uh not particularly secure uh you know you you brought up you know the thing about the holocaust is uh and i say this having i was just at the holocaust museum in jerusalem uh last week uh the thing about it is that was le- that was like 75 years ago that's crazy to me right uh we're not talking about you know, um, uh, some like, uh, um, you know, long-standing Jewish success story. Um, it's within people's lifetimes that you know there were attempts uh, to to and, and attempts based on an idea that Jews were not white. Mm-hmm. Like the the Holocaust is a was a racial uh, a racial. Um, uh, operation, right? The Aryan race against the Jewish race. Uh, so I don't, I don't look at, you know, Jewish uh, success in America uh, and think, uh, oh yeah, like that was this. This is obviously going to stick because mm-hmm. uh, uh, we're already seeing, you know, in in a ton of the rhetoric that's coming out, especially right now. Um, uh, we're seeing really openly anti-Semitic uh, sentiment that is 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 basically race based, mm-hmm. right? like, uh, and I should say the vast, vast, vast majority of it is coming from white people, right? Mm-hmm. It's like it's the the same people who are opposed to you know the same kind of white nationalist sort of crew, white Christian nationalist crew, who are concerned with you know great replacement theory stuff right like who are concerned with the diluting of their like racial stock in america uh mm-hmm. who are concerned with losing power to people who don't look like them and who aren't them right they're looking at jews and saying well they're not us mm-hmm. right so you know when when i think about where the the threat is coming from uh it's definitely like the people who are anti-immigrant are Mm anti-Jewish and they are also like anti-black for the most Mm -hmm. part, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's all, it's all part of the same package, all of which is to say, I think that it seems really clear to me that you brought up, like there's a, you know, a history of, uh, you know, a a sense of mutual oppression, Mm -hmm. right? Between, you know, Jewish people and black people. And I know, you know, 
I, I certainly grew up, um, you know, I grew up reading the Exodus story, telling the Exodus story from the Bible um, and really openly in making the equation of like that story about Jewish people, right? Like my Jewish story of Exodus and the black experience in America, right? Um, uh, my family and we weren't alone, right? Sang like go down Moses mm -hmm. at our like Passover celebrations, right? Like it was really, really straightforward that like, yes, that was us. And, and there's a relationship with, uh, with, you know, the current situation of uh, African-Americans in, uh, in the U S um, we, uh, you know, I grew up again, like being very, uh, it being very clear to me repeatedly, right. Uh, you know, all the stuff, you know, MLK, um, you know, marching and there's like Jewish leaders marching right next to him. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Uh, the, there's a, there was a real sense of cooperation in the, you know, for, for the, for the purpose of, you know, fighting for civil rights. And it seems to me, it seems to me like uh, when we have an increase in uh, conflict between the two groups, it is almost always in the context of, and maybe even stoked by, not one group or the other, but by a like external social narrative that is being driven by the folks whose power and authority are threatened by both groups. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is like, I can't for the life of me figure out why, um, why there would ever be that kind of like uh, confrontation uh, between uh, Jewish and African American communities. Uh, because of, you know, because of the history, uh, because of the cooperation, you know, over, over time, uh, the only advantage I see to it is for folks who don't want either of those two groups to have, uh, you know, to, to, to have the power that they have. And it's interesting that when we talk about that, because some of it was for me as being someone who's tried to be into learning the history of uh, individuals was even when it was back in the, I would say the early 90s, when we were um, helping to lead the Freddie Fixer Parade. Some of our, 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 our best connections and, and individuals who supported us were of Jewish faith. And even being a NAACP um, individual for many years, when I found out the um, originators and, you know, as you hear of a, of a woman, Ida Wells, of Jewish faith working along with W.D. Du Bois, it was kind of the same thought of the lynchings in the South were um, very um, uh, atrocity that we saw. And if there were people of good faith that weren't African-American that wanted to see it end and got involved in the struggle. And you mentioned when MLK walked down the um, different paths, he walked at different marches he had. There were people of Jewish faith that was right there work along with him, looking at it from a holistic approach of that. What we all deserve is, especially in a country that's supposed to be a liberated country that is for all and all have been welcomed here is that you have the opportunity for free enterprise you have the opportunity to the uh how they say the white picket fest with the house and you, you you should have those opportunities so why is it that these two particular groups have been combated at times against each other when it seems like the struggle that they've come through has been the same to get here one was gotten here by xl one was Bought here by captivity, but at the end of the day, when you get here, it's trying to build a better life for those um, individuals of whether it's your particular religion or your nationality to say, hey, we want our own uh, as African Americans, 40 acres and a mule. But as we look up now and we look at from the Jewish part of owning property, and um, we can just take New Haven as a prime example. We have Mandy, we have Pike, owns a lot of property in the city of New Haven. And does that, but 
produce a power structure that makes it just feel that the person who may be looked at as the less is struggling to move up the power chain and have to take a chunk at the individual who you look at as at the top of the chain. And so we're just trying to get an understanding of why is it so much hostility when when this is brought to the fore? And is this something in your studies and, and, and you're working with your uh, students on establishing what is what is this about? You know, our, our producer even explained just briefly before we came on is the thought of, yeah, why do we have people divided in all these different buckets that makes it seems as though that it's, it's an oppression against each other versus a struggle to maintain and to prosper together? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the word, the word, the word that, uh, that he used and the word that I think, you know, comes to mind for me also is right. There's a real tribalism. Um, and it's, it's funny because I think, I think that, you know, let's say this, right? the tribes, right? Like we think about, you know, we talk, we go back to the beginning, right? The, the 12, the lost tribes of Israel, right? Tribes get us associated with Judaism. Like we're a tribal community, right? Like uh, we're, um, and the, you know, there's some there, you know, has been historically some truth to that, right? Like a really insular community, a community that has largely always existed as a minority, um, uh, like a, truly as a racial minority, especially in sort of you know in Europe back before the Holocaust, right? People who were, were I mean, we were, you know, we were put in in ghettos in uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, whatever, really set apart and insular and like for those reasons had to be, but like had to be worried about like, you know, keeping, keeping ourselves together. But I think the notion of Jews is like this particularly like insular tribal, like only, we're only concerned with like uh, with ourselves kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, vision. I don't think that's uh, I mean, I don't think that that's legitimate. Uh, and again, again, right, we think back to you just gave examples and we've been talking about ways in which, you know, Jews have historically seen the oppression and struggle of others as just all too familiar. Right. Uh, the you know, the the thing that we say about the Holocaust, right, like uh, the you know, the, the tagline is, is right. Never again. Uh, but that's not meant to be never again. Jews. Right? Like it's meant to be never again anyone uh right which is um which is to say it's a constant i think there's a, a sort of a constant awareness uh of you know we went through a thing we know what it looks like and we went through it back in you know the bible with you know the the story of pharaoh and exodus and that's been the model um and that was the model for you know civil rights movement and and other stuff uh other things like that in the u.s but also we know it's what it's like in in the contemporary times uh that none of that has ever been about like, oh well, uh, as long as we're okay, other people can should can can go ahead and suffer. Right? The the lessons of the Exodus in the Bible and the lessons of the Holocaust, uh, you know, seventy five years ago, is uh, have to do with the structures of uh, of oppression, have to do with recognizing what it looks like when one people is picked out as being the, you know, the ones to blame, the ones to, 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 to oppress, uh, as if the oppression of this people is going to solve larger societal problems, which is something that is true, both of the, the biblical story, the Exodus and of the, of the Holocaust, right? Like, um, you know, if, if we just keep them down, uh, and we maintain the power of whoever, uh, the, you know, Pharaoh or, uh, white Aryans, uh, then everything is going to be all right. Uh, Jews are all too familiar with like what that systemic kind of uh, power structure looks like and what that kind of oppression looks like. Um, and I think you know there's this uh, there's this notion that gets put out there in the uh, certainly in in certain uh, I don't know, conservative circles uh, that I, I think is meant to suggest that oh well. As long as, you know, as long as we keep the Jewish people happy, they won't be a problem, right? Uh, it's, a, it's like a tribalism that's imposed on uh, or like assumed to be part of who we are. So, you know, uh, whatever, stuff happens in the news. We've all been watching, right? Um, and, you know, the former president meets with, uh, 
whomever he meets with, we're not naming names, uh, but, you know, meets with them. And then uh, and then all of those uh, all these Republicans, all these folks come out and say. And I and say, oh, we condemn anti-Semitism. Right. It's like, cool. Uh, but they say that as if saying we condemn anti-Semitism is like, all right, I, well, I, you know, I I solved that because I took because I took care of the Jews. Right. And like, oh, we know that all the Jews need is for us to say that we're not anti-Semitic and then they'll and then they'll stay out of our way. But, you know, I my I got all upset about this on Twitter, as I tend to do sometimes. And I was like, come on, like you can't be like we condemn anti-Semitism, but at the same time be putting in place or supporting policies that are oppressing other people, immigrants, African-Americans gay people, right? Like, uh, because you're just assuming, you're assuming a sort of tribalism, right? You're assuming that we're going to be like, Jews are okay, go ahead and do whatever you're going to do with everybody else. That's a way that they're like pitting us so against each other. Um, and so it, then I guess, the, you know, the, the conversation changes into how do we combat against that because that's what's happening is what happens in our local communities and you know across the nation is the thought is if you say anything that is not taken well by Jewish is the first thing and the the terminology is always anti-Semitic and it's people are saying well you know well what about when there were conversations about slavery What what about when there's jokes about um, different religions. I actually grew up as a Jehovah Witness, and so mm-hmm. I got the ridicule of jokes, and no one really, there was no one held accountable for the jokes they made or the different things they said about the religion, but it just seems like there's one of those things, it's like it's a, the forbidden rule is like you can't say anything about the Jewish or you're going to be uh, exiled, you're going to be, you know, your, 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 your funds can be taken away, your positioning in life can be taken away. And, and people are just trying to figure out, well, how did we get to this point? Because I feel everybody um, at times have some comments that might, I'm not asking for, you know, people think it's okay to have disrespectful comments about anybody, but I'm just thinking that in the world we live in, we comment about everything. We comment about people's sexuality. We comment about people's jobs. We comment about where people live, we comment, we comment about everything. So how is particular comments taken to a height where there's backlash to it versus other comments that there's no backlash to? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. Cause like, uh, if I'm sitting here and I'm like, look, I don't think anyone should be making, either, either no one makes comments about anybody, which is okay. Like that would be a fine thing. Like who? No one would complain about that. Like, um, or everybody gets to take. Everybody should be able to take a joke, right? Like, like one of the two, like seems seems okay. Um, honestly, the there's a sense in which I think what you're saying, and I think you're probably right, is that the like the the way that it that it is now, where and I think it's true. Uh, if you say something and you get slapped with the label anti-Semitic, um, like that happens very fast and it, with a big political backlash. Um, and that very, like that very scenario uh, reinforces actually, even as it like looks like it's defense of Judaism. It in a sense it's actually creating a context in which there's a lot of, like, there's all this resentment towards Judaism. Like, oh, like, they get special treatment. Um, And so, you know, again, like, every time the, like, Republican comes out and says, uh, oh, well, I condemn the anti-Semitism that was, you know, we saw from from whatever, uh, I'll say this. Uh, It seems to me that a lot of the time, Maybe this is, I, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I th- my, it's my sense, right? Like uh, nobody said anything about anti-Semitism when it was Trump doing it when he was president, right? Trump said things, Trump said, I mean, n- nobody in the Republicans does, right? Trump said things when he was president, you know, about how like the Jews, again, talking about the tribalism, the Jews should vote for me and like me because I support Israel, 
right? He couldn't understand why Jews weren't supportive of him. He was like, I did the thing for you. Shouldn't you, right? There's an assumption of tribalism that, there. Whereas Jews were like, we don't like you because you're racist and you're mm. sexist, right? Mm. And you're like, like, because we were like thinking about the oppression of all the others, um, mm. you know, in, and also and also of, of ourselves. But um, no, none of the Republicans back then were like, oh, you know, well, we condemn anti-Semitism and Trump shouldn't have said that. They said it suddenly when Trump was, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, when Trump was meeting with a black man, right? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it was, there's, there's a political, um, like, deployment of, you know, the protests against anti-Semitism that comes from the right, at least. Uh, you know, again, I think it's totally okay. Uh, I don't think it's totally okay for Jews at any point to be like, hey, that was anti-Semitic in the same way that it's totally okay for, you know, African-Americans at any point to be like, Hey, that was racist. Right. It should, it should always be fine um, for, for groups to identify the things that they find offensive. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. The problem is like, the question is like, so when do the political leaders uh, step in and say, you said something about them that is over a line for me? the political leader who is not of that, you know? Uh, and I think it's telling that, you know, they, and I, and again, like back to what I was saying earlier, I think they use the, this is being used as a wedge, right? Because um, they don't treat uh, Jews and African-Americans the same. That's right. That's right. Right. But it's not Jews who aren't treating Jews and African-Americans the same. Right. To, for the most part. Right. It's politicians who who are like, you know, using the groups differently for different aims. Um, and I think I think pitting them against each other. So how could we get to a thought? Because this is a word that I hear a lot. I'm actually in the health field um, profession. I hear the word equity yeah. and the word equity actually has become a terminology that I have begin to not like, mm-hmm. because my thought is if the powers that be wanted things to be equitable, they can make it equitable. And so what happens is you live in communities where people are trying to figure out if I live in a particular ward, let's take in New Haven Ward 28 as a large um, composition of Jews, has a large composition of african American, and there are some disputes within that ward. How is it that we're looking for equity, but what our thought of equity is very different? So, like I said, we talked about earlier uh, the white picket fence in the house and, you know, being able to secure your family, be able to make sure your kids have the things that they need. I'm sure that's probably the goal of every individual in our country. We want our kids to have what they're supposed to have. We want to live in a nice house. We want to drive a nice car. We want to either own a nice business or have a great job that allows us to pay for the things that we need to do, right? So, is the equitable thought of Whatever nationality, whatever religion, is it the, why is it not the same? I always say to somebody, if we're looking at, if we're trying to get to the same point, why do we have so many different ways you think that you get to the same point? Aren't we all trying to get to the same point? Or is that not true? Or is it these conflicts that we deal with in the American public that shows that I don't think this other group of people or this nationality or this religion really wants you to get to that point too? What yeah. is your feeling on that? Thought? Yeah, so I, I agree. Equity is a is a is a tough term, and it's uh, and it's like it's the kind of idea that sounds good, um, <laughs> but it sounds good, but but it's so easily taken in what I think are our problem. You know, like look, equi- you can be saying uh, equity, equity, equity. And what you are doing with that is you are trying to get rid of affirmative action, right? Because just equity, right? Like, because there's a difference between equity on one hand and justice on the other, mm-hmm. right? Those aren't, or at least it's not the same thing, even if they might overlap sometimes. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's tough, right? Part of, part of the thing is um, equity with whom? Right. 
um, there's a sense in which uh, like the, the people who set the terms for like what it is that we're all trying to get equity with uh, get to also are also the ones who are sort of the ones who control the, the door, right? Like they're the ones who say like, okay, now I, now I'll let you through the door so that you can have something that looks like equity or something that looks like parity or like justice or something. Um, the thing is in America, I think like, again, very much uh, contrary to, and despite the kinds of arguments that are, are, have, are being made these days and are historically always made the people who control that door and who get to, who are like the ones who are, who are letting people in um, to, to try and achieve equity aren't the Jews, right? Like we had to get let in ourselves. Like, that's how I know. Right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I teach at Yale yeah. and, you know, 75 years ago, Holocaust time, 75 years ago, uh, Yale had a cap on Jews, right? Like Yale wasn't letting Jews in, or if it was, it was a very tiny percentage. Um, and, you know, there was like, uh, uh, you know, there, there was a, a real, like, there was, there was gatekeeping going on. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, we still, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of ways in which, um, in which uh, Jewish people are still trying to try, like the door isn't quite open or the door has only recently been opened. Um, but it's not Jews who are opening and closing that door. Right. We're, we simply, we got let in earlier. I think that's true. We got mm-hmm. let in earlier, but you know why? Because racism. Mm hmm. Right, like, um, and not universally so. Obviously, there's still a ton of backlash against it. Uh, but I don't think that I don't think Jews get it, having gotten through the door were like, aha, we got through the door, uh, and now we're now we're white again, or for the first time, and so we're going to close the door behind us. Um, I think the same people are holding the door. And and so how do we how do we look at from a humanity standpoint? Because I as I sit here, I think of it as this. So if I was trying to be equitable to you, what would what would that thought be? So okay, Maurice, can you be a divinity professor? Yes, I believe I can. I've, I have a master's in public administration, but if I went to apply for divinity school, how long would it take me to become a professor? And could I say to myself, well, you know, Joel's a good friend of mine, and um, you know, we hang out here. Now, how would we be viewed in the American public as they see me and you out and about together hanging out, socializing? So it's like, oh, Maurice, is that your friend? And I say to a, a colleague, my yes, yeah, that's, that's a good friend of mine. I've known Joel for 20 years. He helped me get into divinity school. Now I'm a professor at the at the Yale Divinity School. He's a great friend of mine. Me and his family are good. You know, I go by um, on the holidays, we, you know, and we've we, we've we've established a great relationship. I'll have friends who I grew up with would be like, Morris, why are you hanging around him? And what, you know, how did y'all become close? And how did like how did this happen? And it's a thought to where why is it in a humanity thing? Of he's a good person, I'm a good person. We met each other. We had some similar veins that could help each other. And, you know, he he mentored me and helped me get to a certain point of being a divinity professor after that wasn't my original plans or that wasn't my original goals. It's like, why are why are we still not at that point in 2022 to where that should be something that should be happening on a basically regular basis? Maurice, do you want to come to Divinity School? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm happy to make it happen. No, but look, the thing is, uh, I, your vision was a lovely one. I'd love to ha- have all that happen. That sounds great. Um, why isn't it happening? Like, it's not, be- the thing is, it's not because of you and me. Yeah, that's what I mean. But it's the other people who have made it to where that that, that that's not custom and that's not traditional but what would be traditional is if i saw you walking down dixwell avenue and me and you got into a confrontation or an argument over something it would be traditional to say maurice was trying to bully 
Joel and Joel called the police and got Maurice locked up. And that would be what people would want to see as traditional instead of saying, you know what? Joel met Maurice on Dixel Avenue because they were going to go have a pizza and talk about him joining the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're, I'm, I'm one of those individuals that I want to always push the needle to get us to a place where every problem was supposed to be created equal to the opportunity yeah. to, to, so, to be prosperous and not because of your color or your skin or your religion, you know, because those are the things we always heard of, all oh, not because of your color, or your creed or your religion that you should be held back. But then at the end of the day, we do it on a regular basis. And then it's just to what point does it get to where someone wants to retaliate against the, what we would probably call culturalistic things and and historical things that keep us apart as people that shouldn't be based on color, religion, and and all those yeah. other things. I mean, to my, to my mind, it's there's it's curious, right? The so much of what stands in the way of um, you know the kind of like humanistic interaction you're talking about is the existence of and adherence to um like you know it's sort of what you also pre-existing narrative frames of how things are or should be right um uh and some of those stories and it's funny i said I said, it's ironic because of course stories are human are humanities also right like uh but but how much of how many and how much of these narratives are like um, are our stories, and how much of these are stories that have been told about us that we have internalized? Um, you know, I, again, I'll talk about Jews for a second, but you'll see. I think you'll see the overlap, right? Um, uh, in you know, in Europe for generations and hundreds of years they took jews and put they you know they they took the christians took jews and put them in ghettos right put them in they were like you can only be here and then they were like man you people really keep to yourselves huh <laughs> like like come on <laughs> you know like, you're right, uh, you're right. but then but then that becomes part of our story Right? And that becomes a way a way that we end up like over time viewing ourselves. And um, it, 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 as you say, we can flip flop that because you put African Americans in hoods, and then everybody course. says, "Oh, nobody wants to go to the hood. I'm not. It's too dangerous to go over there, or they're just by themselves, and they're you know they're they're not going to treat you right if you come to the hood." Right, and, and then and then me being on Dixwell, <laughs> right, like takes like be, becomes part of a story that's that's not the story of me being on dicks while meeting you right <laughs> um, right. uh but like okay so fine storytelling is how we get by as people right like as communities right it's how we understand who we are it's how we define ourselves it's how we interact it's like that that's a real thing but uh like we also get to tell our own stories right we control our own stories um you know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking back to where we started, right? Talk, talking about like the the Jewish communities in Africa. Right? Uh, again, I don't care whether they are genetically one thing or the other. The story they're telling themselves, and the story they're telling everyone else is, we are Jewish and we have been Jewish forever and ever. Like they get to say that. They get to tell that story. Now, them telling that, but like that that story conflicts with the story of the like the Christians in Africa who have been oppressing the hell out of them for however many hundreds of years, right? Cause they tell the story that like, you can't be Jewish or like, um, the, the, the way that stories are used, like, is this, are, are the stories building bridges or are they building barriers? Right. Um, and like, it's okay to use, to have stories that like, reaffirm your own identity that's what stories do but like i think I just I want, I want, a, you came up with a book that we're gonna write we're gonna write a book of the stories build bridges or build barriers and we're gonna go over the history and we're gonna in, input those different stories that's gonna help us to try to understand it that what happened the story of starting the naacp did the story of marching with um 
Martin Luther King, did those do those stories build bridges or do they build barriers? Because it's it's been shown that Jewish and, and blacks can work together. We we have yeah. stories of that, but then we always have stories of the ones that didn't um, make a building that it actually it destroyed a bridge. We have Benson Hurst stories. We have all kinds of stories that's gonna help us to say, well, no, in the same community, they didn't get along and they don't have the same uh, lot in life and they're not working together to get to the same points in life as individuals that came to a country that wasn't their native land. So, I mean, I really, when I tell you, I really, Professor, enjoyed this discussion today. This is going to probably hopefully be met, um, one of many, and we'll bring some other people on and we'll, we'll have more panelists, but to establish uh, this contact, uh, once again, I think Tom Flicken allows me to do this um, once a month. I think those that are listening are, it's going to be a very helpful thought of some of the topics and, and some of the conversation and dialogue that we had today. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll come visit you at the Divinity School and, and, and come to see some of your students, and maybe I may even be able to bring some young ones with me um, from the community to, to kind of see how we can start bridging this gap and educating each other on the lifestyles, the religious belief, and also on the humanity belief that we all should have with the opportunity to be able to be one and to learn from each other. And also as we live in the same communities to help each other build. So I really, really appreciate your time and we'll look forward to reconnecting and, and continuing this kind of dialogue that is healthy in communities to have these real talks about things that we see every day. So I really appreciate you. Thank so you enjoy, much. enjoy, and we uh, hope everyone enjoyed our discussion today and look forward to further discussions on real topics like this. We thank you and we hope everybody have a safe weekend and enjoy the rest of your Friday. We thank you. As I got another rhyme, another rhythm for y'all to listen I'm never quitting on my mission, I'ma roll with what I'm giving Got some ambition, this new addition, filling positions Looking at the void in myself and feeling what's missing Better watch the way you going, better go in the right direction In the moment you stressing, but you gon' be counting blessings And I know that for certain, keep on working, open curtains Haters swerving, cause they ain't ready for your final version Whoa. I'm never gon' give up, give up Fall down, I just gotta get up, get up, yeah. Cause this is my road, let's camera action already